Thanks a lot. Um, so yes, we have the time slot after lunch, and I hope I will, well, I will most definitely try to do my best to make it as interesting as possible. And I would like to start with this thing. Um, can you understand what is written here? Someone can help me. Let me just maybe highlight one section. Well, as an anecdote, when I first saw this HTML page, well, some stupid kind of nonsense uh, kind of thinking crossed my head, and that was the fact that I need to improve my English because I can't understand what's written here. Maybe it's a literature kind of English. English is not my first language. And that was my stupid thought. Uh, but I will answer the question, what's really out there in hopefully a few slides. So what I'm going to talk to you today is, well, hopefully I will take you into a short journey when I will talk about the dark side of search engines optimization in campaigns. And in this journey, I will talk about uh, what's SEO, uh, what kind of attacks of SEO we can see out there, is those attacks are successful or not. And hopefully at the end of the presentation, I will talk to you about how we as a community, as AppSec community, can do things that will help us mitigate, prevent, and eliminate the risk of SEO attacks. So a few words about myself. My name is Or Katz. I'm principal lead at Akamai, uh, Enterprise Security Business Unit, new security business in Akamai. Um, I'm a member of OSP Israel, uh, in the board of OSP Israel. Really enjoy doing that. I'm a high school teacher one day a week. That's my contribution to my community, and I truly, truly enjoy doing that. A lot of fun for me. I'm really a fan of data and sciencing of data, and it's something that I'm trying to do on a daily basis. Not always have the time to do that, but it's something that excites me. And last but not least, I have an issue with ducks, so stay tuned. There are ducks in the presentation. Um, so let's, con let's start. Well, a lot of the research that I'm doing, the investigation that I'm doing, start with looking at the actual attack payload. Um, as part of my job at Akamai, I have visibility to a lot of attacks, web attacks. And in this case, I came across a SQL injection kind of attack. And in a way, when I first looked at the payload of the attack, I was saying to myself, well, I saw such payloads in the past. But there is something unique about the payload, this payload. So the first step that is unique about this payload is the, the upper uh, box. You can see that it's not just a SQL injection to try to retrieve data. It's a SQL injection to try to update data. Most SQL attacks that we can see are not trying to update. They try to take out data. And that's an interesting part. The second part here is the uh, bottom of the, of the payload. You can see that, in a way, this is a generic kind of SQL attack, meaning the attackers are targeting, in this case, MS SQL servers, since we know that the syntax is relevant to MS SQL servers. Uh, and more to that, they are targeting the generic table of MS SQL. And in a way, it's generic because they are looking into those tables that has been deployed in any given MS SQL server. They try to retrieve the name of the tables and the columns of all kind of custom tables not knowing those names, but retrieving the data, and try to update those custom-made tables and fields with their input. And here comes the interesting part, because so far it's, well, as I said before, I saw such attack payloads. In this case, I looked at the payload that someone is trying, that the bad guys are trying to inject. And usually I used to saw those kind of table, uh, payloads when someone tried to inject SQL, uh, sorry, cross-site scripting, for example. But in this case, someone is trying to inject an HTML page or a part of HTML page, a link, okay, a, a hidden link in this case. And when I looked at the name of the page that someone tried to inject, I was able to see, and I don't know if you can read it, why do women cheat on their husband.asp.x? At, at this point, I was very curious about what's happening here. So my next step is, since I have a visibility to a, a huge amount of data, part of Akabai visibility to the data, I was going into all those attacks out there, going through Akamai network, and we trying to figure out how many 
websites are being attacked by the same payload or similar payload. And over time, I was able to see that there are, well, at a peak, over 2,400 unique websites, okay? Total on the all, on all the time frame, there are over 3,500 unique websites being attacked, okay? So obviously, it's a campaign. Someone is targeting websites across the internet. So the next step in doing those kind of high-level understanding of the attack was to try to understand who is the source of the attack. And in a way, I was able to see that there are nearly 30, uh, sorry, 350 IP addresses representing uh, computing resources that are sending all those attacks. And obviously, that's an indication of a botnet. And when looking on the source IP of those attackers, I was able to see that they are coming from 34 different countries, 190 from the United States, 24 from uh, Great Britain, 21 from Netherlands, 14 from Brazil, and 10 from Germany. In other words, we can see a botnet going from different locations around the world. And as an anecdote, uh, for those of you that are using practices of geolocation blocking, so clearly when you can see such a botnet that, well, more than 50% of the botnet is coming from the United States, well, doing geolocation in such cases won't work. So what have we seen so far? We saw someone trying to inject HTML links by using SQL injection, obviously. We were able to see over uh, 3,500 unique websites. Well, we can see that there are nearly 350 um, members in a botnet doing that, but we don't know why. So at that point of time, I was saying to myself, maybe it's time for me to follow um, the breadcrumb trail, trying to understand what really happens here. So these are the things that I was doing. First step was to try to understand what really happened on those payloads, meaning I took those payloads and I extracted the URLs being injected, and I was able to find 17 such URLs, okay? And when looking into those URLs, well, accessing those URLs, I was able to find a link to one site, a site that talk about infidelities and cheating stories. So that was the first hint. The second step of my analysis was to look on this page. This page is one of those 17 pages that someone tried to inject to, 17 different websites. And I told you my first impression, but my second impression on this page is that, well, I try to understand what can I understand on this page. So the title makes sense, right? Dating site for married people. This link, cheating wife, makes sense. And let me just say, please remember the, the phrase cheating wife because we will come to that later on. And last, on this page, there are two bullets with something that makes sense. The rest of the page doesn't make sense for a reason. There's good reason for that, but someone's created a page that only part of it makes sense and other parts doesn't make sense. Step three on my investigation was to go to those 17 websites and try to understand, well, the context of those, page, those websites when comparing the actual pages, those 17 pages that I was able to see in the context of those websites. So I was able to see the following website. I was able to see website of US government. I was able to, to see websites that will write something about astronomy, website of a Chinese uh, e-commerce, um, educational website, and finally, a website that do sports streaming. Uh, this is Yao Ming trying to make a dunk, but it's not a successful one. And the context in those cases is that those pages that we saw before as an example of one of those pages talk about something that's related to cheating and infidelities, and you wouldn't expect to see such pa pages in a US government website, obviously. And that was a strong indication that someone put those pages out there. Step four in my investigation was, well, let's use Google. I have the payload that someone's trying to inject. Let's try to see if there are out there in the internet 
websites or pages that were injected with those payloads. So as I was doing that, I was able to find more than a few of those, but the most interesting one was this uh, Chinese traveling blog website. And if you have some doubts, then it's, well, it's been ranked for uh, 5,000 in a world by Alexa. Alexa is a web analytics site that ranks all, web, all websites across the internet. And so being 5,000 in the world, meaning it has a lot of visibility. Looking at the website at the beginning, I wasn't able to see those links that I was looking for, the, the links that Google told me that are existing on this page. It wasn't visible. So I looked at the source of this page, and then I saw the first interesting thing, and that was my payload, the, the payload that I was looking for. And you can see, why do I want to cheat on my wife with a link? I obviously obfuscated the link, which is, OK, this is what I was looking for. But looking a bit more on this, this website, I was able to see other evidences of someone putting similar links but this time he's trying to sell all kind of medicines, medicines that require prescription. So having that in the page, well, while talking about infidelities and cheating, well, it's, it's a grayish era, area of, uh, of the, the, well, the reputation of the website. And it can be a legitimate website. But once you see all kind of websites that promote uh, selling medicine illegally, well, it becomes more of a, the blackish kind of gray of the of the spectrum. So let's do an overview of what we have seen. We were able to see on the first circuit, and that's where I began my uh, investigation, uh, a massive attack, high-scale attack, targeting over 3,500 uh, 3, websites across the world. And let me just say that that's my visibility from Akamai point of view. Obviously, and we have great visibility on the world, but Obviously, there are many other websites being attacked at the same time. So some of those websites will got compromised and got infected by those uh, SQL injections. Some aren't. Those that get infected are redirecting to 17 different websites where we can see the content lesson, content, well, the, the, the the content that makes sense and doesn't make sense. And all those 17 websites are pointing to the same point, which is the cheating and infidelity story site. So I'm still having a question of why, why someone is doing that. So let's try to see what we've seen so far. We were able to see massive SQL injection attack. We were able to see attack that been executed by a botnet. Uh, well, more to that, the injection is for HTML links. Um, we can see that, well, in a way, um, those web websites, once being injected, contains controversial hidden content. Um, we were able to see all kind of pages that are meaningless and meaningful, in a way. Um, and we were able to see that the context of those websites that got those pages in them doesn't make sense. And uh, the last point here is that all those links are leading to the same website. So at that point of time, well, I got my conclusion when it looks like a duck and swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, it is probably a Black Hat SEO campaign. So at this point of time, well, we need to explain what's SEO. So in order to understand what's SEO, we'll drink a bit of water. So in order to understand what's SEO, I was looking into some definition of SEO. So when you go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia is saying that SEO is the process of affecting the visibility of your website, which makes sense. And Moz.com, which is a website that is specialized in SEO activities, say that SEO is actually uh, the process of making your website easy to be understand by machine or by humans. And my definition of SEO is that at the end of the day, SEO is a process that want to take your website to the primary <coughs> page of search engine results given some keywords. Meaning once you look for some keywords, you want to be on the first page of the search engine 
regardless of the, uh, the, the given search engine. So what motivates the SEO industry? So the first, so the, well, the short answer for that is money, obviously. And what does it mean money? Visibility equals money. If your site, if you have a website that sells shoes, and when someone looks for the word or the keyword shoes in a given search engine, and your website will return on that page, that means that you will have a lot of money because people will go through your website, will buy shoes, and obviously it's worth a lot of money. But it's a more than that because SEO campaigns um, has, well, they cost money. And we know that SEO campaign costs between 500 to 14, 40,000 uh, dollars per month. That's monthly feed. And, and in a way, the SEO industry uh, defined it by saying, well, we will do, th this is what they are saying to their customer, we will do a campaign. We will choose with you together, the customer and the SEO vendor, we will choose the relevant keywords. And we want to make sure, we want to guarantee that at the end of our uh, campaign, uh, those keywords, when you will look into those keywords in, let's say, Google, your website will appear in the primary uh, page. And if not, we will bring you your money back, meaning that's how they, they measure their success in terms of money. So now it's time to talk in, on the SEO from the search engine point of view, the, the vendors themselves, like Google, Yahoo, uh, Microsoft. And in a way, we have partial knowledge about this because this is their magic sauce. They won't tell you how they are doing their algorithms in order to determine if your website is popular or not. They won't do that, obviously, because if they will tell us, we will manipulate it. But we know something about it because a lot of people research that because some of those things are knowledge uh, that is, well, it's pretty obvious to many of us, but we still don't have a clear visibility to, the, to their algorithms. So here are some of the things that they use in order to determine your ranking, your website ranking. And the first thing, they are using some properties or some information that is related to your site, things that are in your control. If you have a website, what thing that you can control that will affect your SEO ranking? So first of all, they will use your domain, meaning your history, their domain history, or your domain name, if the name makes sense. If your domain has um, a long duration of time, well, exist, exists for a long time and has a good reputation, they know about it. It's more than that. They, you, you, they also look into your content, meaning they look on the keywords that you are using, the image optimizations, the updates of the content, grammar, spelling, all of those things are part of the equation that make the decision. Speed, if, you're, if your site performance is very quick, that also influences the result. If you're using CDN, that's also something they use as part of the calculations. And what's related to outbound links, meaning the links that goes from your site to other sites, this is obviously on our control. And in those cases, they look on the content of those uh, redirecting links and on the theme of those <laughs> links. But there are other things that are not in our control or not entirely by, uh, by us being controlled. And that's things that are out of our site. And in this case, the number of referring links, if there are a lot of links referring to one, my website, that means that my website is popular. Um, the reputation of those links, if those links have a good reputation, if I'm, I don't know, selling a sport gear and NBA.com is redirecting to my website, so obviously NBA.com reputation will be something that will apply to me uh, the same as part of the, uh, this magic, shop, magic, magic sauce kind of calculations. Um, the context of the referring, again, the same example, if the NBA.com, which is a sport-related website, re uh, redirect to my website where I sell sport gear, so obviously that makes sense. And last but not least, uh, a phrase that is called Latin semantics indexing. And this is something that uh, search engines are using. And in a way, it's some sort of a machine learning process 
that goes into a website, separate pages on the website. And when it goes into those pages, you try to digest the pages. You try to make some sort of understanding of the page. And in order to do that, you take out all kind of words that doesn't make sense. You take out all kind of relation word. And at the end of the day, it summarizes all the content <laughs> by finding all kind of words and the relation between those words in order to use those things as part of his uh, ability to put the page or the website in the right ranking once someone is looking for specific keywords. So in a way, uh, this is somehow, uh, somehow related to the thing that we saw before. You, we saw that contentless, contentful kind of uh, web page. And when search engines look at those pages, and they don't understand the context of things, they don't take it, they throw it away. But when they found something that makes sense, that's the point that they can classify the specific page as something with a specific meaning. We'll get back to that later. So let's now try to evaluate the campaign that we saw before in, in the new termino the terminology that we have that is related to SEO. So we were able to see many referral links, right? We were able to see someone that abused referring reputation, meaning someone planted or injected web pages into a legitimate websites and now using those websites as something that give him good reputation. Uh, we were able to see a nested referral link, links, meaning not one circle, two circles of nesting of referral links, which is something that also being used as part of the SEO calculations. We were able to see hidden links, meaning someone who's trying to make the website looks, look the same for human, but look different from for uh, search engines. We were able to see specially crafted content, which is the meaningful and meaningless content. And again, we were able to see the LSI abuse, meaning someone was creating pages that once search engine will go into those pages, it will throw away few things and will remain with few keywords and phrases that make sense. And that's what was the goal of those that created those pages. So at this point of time, it was the time that I was trying to say, okay, so I saw a campaign, I have all the evidence, now try, let's try to see if this is a successful campaign or not. And in order to do that, I was using two data sources. The first one is Alexa. Alexa, as I mentioned before, it's a web analytics platform. It's being owned by Amazon, as far as I know. And when you go into Alexa, you put a name of a website, and they will give you a lot of details about how popular this website, who is being redirected to this website, how it is being used, a lot of interesting things. And one of those interesting things that Alexa show you is given some keywords being used by search engine, how people got into that specific website. And you can see that at the first place, we can see the cheating wife, the one that I told you to remember. Meaning, when someone is looking for the term cheating wife on a given search engine, 11% of the cases, it will click on the promoted website and will get to that website. The website that all those links go goes into, right? Second evidence, well, I was doing that over time, but one of the things that Alexa give you is the ranking um, in a globally kind of uh, definition, meaning they're ranking all the websites around the world and they give you a score, or it's not a score, it's, it's a grade. And at the beginning of my research, that infidelity and cheating website was four million in the world, and you can see the progress over time, where my last check was a few weeks ago, uh, or last week ago, and it was 430 in the world. And that's, that's a huge progress, and that's not a trivial thing to do. Getting into the, the first million of Alexa is not trivial. Being in the half a million of Alexa is definitely not trivial. It's something that, in a way, worth money. As an anecdote, by the way, few weeks back, the, the, the ranking can be changed. You can go up and down. The ranking was even lower. It was um, even below 400,000. So 
and obviously it continued climbing. So my last step on trying to um, get some evidence about the success or fail of that campaign was to look on a different data source, which is a website called Similar Web. It's very similar to Alexa in, in the way that, in the service that it gives, but it has all kind of metrics, a bit different ones. And in Similar Web, they can tell you how people got to that website. What are the techniques that got them into web, to that website? So you can see, for example, that redirection didn't work and referring is not relevant. And in most cases, 88% of the cases, people were using a Google search engine and got into the website. So in other words, someone was doing a campaign and the result of that campaign is that people are going to his website and they are doing that by searching things on Google and going to the website, which means their campaign is definitely successful. It's not popular because people are um, um, clicking on links. It's not popular because someone got the links to his email or because he went into social media and got into the website. They got into the website by looking for all kinds of keywords and terms in Google, and then they got to the website. So, conclusion. Uh, it's a winning duck, no doubt about it. But it's not one duck. It's more than one duck. Because one of the things that I didn't want to, well, I didn't want you to take is that this is one story and, 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 and only one story. There are a lot of stories such as this one. In other cases, the last one, I was able to see even a bigger campaign targeting the drugs and medicine industries, doing the same things using different infected websites. In this case, instead of 17, there are 150 sites, 56, 156 websites that got infected by those half uh, meaningless, half meaningful pages, meaning it's a bigger one. And obviously it's something that become an issue. So we reach out to the end of, well, almost the end of my presentation. And in this slide, I would like to talk to you about how those things are related to us and what we can do about those things. And obviously, if you have questions and you want to contribute, feel free to do that. Um, so the first thing that I think that we should do as an AppSec community is to be able to monitor, meaning we need to be able to monitor the referral links to our sites, meaning uh, the links that are inbound to our site. We can do that. It's not a problem. There are tools and devices that can help us do that. Uh, for example, Alexa and Similar Web, if you pay them, if you, if you have a, a license, then they will bring you all the list of the uh, links pointing to your website, and you can go over those lists and understand if they are legit or not. Um, outbound links are also something that we need to take care of. If someone puts some content on our website, we need to make sure that that content is redirecting to good website, website with a good reputation. Because we haven't talked about it, but the same work that we, we, you can see that the bad guys are doing can be used in different ways. Someone can decide that he want to take down your ranking, <coughs> meaning your competitor, and he can activate a SEO campaign, a negative SEO campaign, making sure that there are bad links redirecting to your website and bad links going out from your website, assuming that you allow people to add content to your website. And obviously, that's not a good, it's not a good thing. More to ranking, um, we have the ability to check our website ranking over time. You can see if the Alexa ranking of our website is being uh, degraded and it's being changed over time, we should do something about it. We should track it and try to understand if something wrong what, uh, was done to our website. We need to do better content inspection. We need to look into all the uploaded content of the users, of our users, to our websites, whether through forms, links that are being updated, and files. We obviously do that today because we are preventing 
cross-site scripting and, well, command injection kind of uh, backdoors and stuff like that, but we never look on the content in terms of reputation, meaning someone can put a link to my website. This is functionality that I allow them to do, but we never check if those links has a bad reputation. And we need to be aware. We need to be aware and incorporate all those things into our risk assessment model. That's an important issue. I know that it's not the most important thing that we need to take care of, but it definitely should be in our list, and we should do that at least up to a few weeks, a uh, few months, something like that. And we need to, in a way, us as a community, as a the community, try to promote it, try to talk about those risks, get it into their attention, and make sure everybody are fully aware of the, all of those things. So I have more things that I would like to share, but the time is... Is, is not enough for me, but I was doing a lot of work related to that. I was doing something that related to open redirects and how they are being used and abused to do SEO attacks. Uh, spamming activities, refer injection, you can do all kind of injection of the referring, it's an issue of itself. Uh, some of those things I published in the past, so you can feel free and read those things, share it, you know, do whatever you want. And stay tuned. I hope to do more things related to that in the future. Um, I think this is all for today. Uh, thanks. Yes, thanks very much, Mur. That was fantastic. Um, questions, please, then? Any, anyone any questions on that? Talk, thanks. Um, Thank you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on poten possible means of uh, actually initially compromising the sites and injecting the initial content? You hinted to open redirects. So, so in, in a way, it's, it's not entirely in the scope of my uh, presentation, but basically there are many ways to inject content to your website. Uh, you can do that with SQL injection, and we saw an example for that. You can get... Uh, access by having your someone's web uh, wor uh, WordPress uh, credential and go into the website and upload content. You can use all kinds of known vulnerabilities on known platform in order to do that. There's a lot of way to do that. Infecting sites, is it's not that complicated these days. Depends, obviously, on your site security posture, but you know there, there's a lot of way to do that. Anyone else? So are there any tools that will allow you to monitor the outbound links from your site and correlate it to the ranking of those sites, like against uh, like a blacklist of sites previously known as malicious or with damaged reputation? So unfortunately, I don't think there is something like that, uh, but it could be a great OWASP project. Um, it's not that complicated, as I said, to do that semi-manually. You can buy a license to Alexa or similar web uh, and they can, and they give you a lot of information about your domain, about how people are using your domain, and a lot of people that from the field of marketing are using those tools because they want to promote the website, they want to see how the website is being used. But us as an app, they can also use those tools in order to understand if something wrong really happened on our website. Marketing and management are not focused on those things, and will never be, uh, in a way. So I have one last uh, question from you guys. Uh, my, kids that, my kids doesn't believe me that I'm standing on stage and speaking in front of you, and I wonder if it will be okay for me to take a, a selfie with you all. <laughs> but you need to be very happy. You need to look <laughs> like you really enjoyed it, even if you haven't, right? It's very important. It's, it's, it's for my kids, right? So it's now the time. And let me give another one because the projector is... Thank you all. Okay, or thank you. Enjoy the conference.